gospel, right? He said, this is it. This is the whole purpose and plan of God. Yes? So, don't you want to know what this plan of God, the gospel, oh, yes. is? Yes. It's not believe in Jesus Christ and go to heaven. You know? Jews, you can't preach Jews to Jews like that. Do you know why? Because they are a chosen nation. You know Luther? They, he read Romans and said, oh, it's not by works, but it is, you know, people are trying to... Romans is not teaching like that. There's no place where he says, you, you try, Jews trying to achieve salvation by works. Jews, they are already saved. They are chosen nation. We, we are Jews. We are chosen by God. We don't work for our salvation. We are it. That's it, yeah. So it's talking about the law, not works. Mm. That's Luther's interpretation. Mm. Romans is not talking about works. It's in Ephesians. If you want to look at that one, one Ephesians talks about Two Ephesians talk about it. It's not by grace. Right? Uh, not it is, sorry, it is by it is <laughs> grace. You've been saved. Not by works, right? But in Romans, it's, it's about law, not works. Mm. Okay, Jews don't work for their salvation. That's right, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. It's yes. very much like our attitude. I, I said Jesus' prayer a long time ago. I'm saved. It doesn't work like that. The gospel doesn't work like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the Old Testament. What is it? What is the gospel concerning his son? It's about his son. Whose son? God's son. Firstly, was descendant from David according to flesh. Secondly, declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection of the dead. His son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Two things. Son of David. He's a descendant of David. Okay? And the other one is, he is a son, son of God. All right? A lot of people, we evangelicals, believe, why, why, why the first one? Why, son of the, why is descendant of David important? The way we interpret this is fully man and is fully God. Okay? That doesn't cut it. That's our interpretation. That's Gentile interpretation. That's true. I'm not saying that's not right. That's true. He is fully God, fully man. I'm not... Yeah, true. But that's not what he, Paul is trying to say here. Okay. So... Still, it be in the fulfillment of all of the covenant promises. Exactly. So that's what he's actually talking about. That's what I'm going to talk about. And then you are, you'll understand what's happening. <laughs> Through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about obedience of faith, not just faith. Okay? What does it say? Obedience that comes from faith. Among the Gentiles. Any Jews? Any? Paul proclaimed those that gospel so that we may come unto obedience through the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. It's not just by faith. So we've got to read the Bible properly, hey. Don't just don't even rely on my teaching, no glands. Okay? You can't stand before the Lord and say, Hey, Glenn taught me this. Oh Steve Wayne from Sydney taught me this. So who, who's that? God said. He's just my messenger. Right? You meant to have this. How many of these have you got at home? And so many versions that we have in computer applications. You'll be judged very severely. I promise you, if you don't read it, and if you have it, mm. all right? You know that verse, right? Those who have been given more? Right. So there you go. So, let's go back to Romans. Romans. It starts like this. The Gospel starts like this. Uh, God created the world, right? And uh, there was Adam and Eve, and there was a Garden of Eden, and it was all good. Right? There was a good connection or fellowship with God initially. Then something happened in Genesis 3. And that became the problem of mankind. What is the problem of the mankind? Sin. Sin. Mm. Sin. Right? The problem of mankind is sin. That broke the relationship, <coughs> fellowship, between God and His people. Mm. Okay? So, God from then on is about solving this 
problem. Okay, so let's go to Genesis 3. And I think it's here. Oh, look, there's a lot of things to talk about here, but I'm not going to go through all this. I'm just going to go to the next. Uh, yeah, next. So here. So after man and woman sinned, God tells uh, the snake or the serpent, so you're going to crawl on your belly all, all your life. Okay? And then to man, you be working your butt off all your life. Okay? Um, it doesn't mean that you didn't work. He actually worked. Adam and Eve worked in the Garden of Eden. Okay? It's not, it doesn't say work. It says you will toil. Everything will come against you to actually, you know, survive, but that you will toil. It doesn't mean you're not going to work. When we go to heaven, we're not going to sit in the cloud and just play harp all day, and all night. We will work, because we'll be on earth. That's like another whole story, but we'll be on earth doing things. Uh, then, um, to women, he says, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then Adam, he said, uh, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth uh, for you, and you shall eat the herb of the, of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife names, uh, wife's name Eve, because she was murdered. Oh, sorry, mother. <laughs> also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. And then the Lord God said, Behold the man. So, one of the things was that this later before, uh, he actually tells the serpent that the, the uh, offspring or the seed of women will crush the head of your seed, the seed of the serpent, which means really Jesus crushing the head of the devil, right? So that, that was already prophesied in that sense that for the future, okay? So when so Jewish women is always thinking, is, well, is my son going to be the Messiah? The, not, the one who crushes the head of the thing. Because it's the offspring of one of the Jewish women. Does that make sense? So they've been expecting that. Now, this is what I want to highlight here. They've sinned already, right? When they sinned, what did they cover themselves with, firstly? Shame. Yeah, so what did he cover the shame and guilt with? Fig leaves. Fig leaves. Do you know how long fig leaves last in a dry day? Not very long. Not very long. Yeah. So you have to change every... Might be good for women, you know, like they can dress up more often, but, you know, it's a bother. So what does God do? He said, here, where is it? Also, for Adam and his, and his wife, the Lord made tunics of skin, right? It's a hu humongous statement. Do you know why? Well, firstly, they were trying to cover their own shame. God is covering their shame. That's one thing. Where do you get a tunic of skin from? An animal. From an animal. Yeah. From an animal. Yeah. Who's the one who actually sacrificed first for the sake of Adam and Eve? God sacrificed an animal to cover the shame and sin of Adam and Eve. Yeah? So that's where the sacrifice, sacrificial system starts. God started it. Mm. Okay. Understand that? So Genesis 3, the problem, what I want to highlight here more than anything else, what I said, is sin. There's a problem with sin in mankind. And God is trying to solve it. Alright? So let's go to the next one, which is uh, Abrahamic covenant. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in all, in you, all the families, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Through whom is God going to bless all the, the families, all the nations of the earth? Abraham. Abraham, is this a conditional covenant or unconditional covenant? 
What is that? Unconditional. Does Abraham have to do anything here? He says, I will do that. I will do this. Okay, remember, this is unconditional from God to Abraham. And I will make you a blessing to all nations. Abraham is going to be one of the solutions to the problem. Okay? Go to the next one. There's more towards uh, Abraham's covenant. Okay? Let me just read that uh, without reading it. Genesis 15 talks about Abraham. God calls Abraham, right? And then he actually makes a, another covenant about the land that he's, he's going to give him. So he actually uh, asked Abraham to bring in um, a dove, uh, I think a, a god and a bull, I can't remember, and just offer up a sacrifice. And later on, God appears as a fire, and he goes back and forth over the carcasses, the sacrifice. Okay. Now the covenant, when they actually made the covenant, I might have shared this before, but uh, when they actually made covenant between two tribes, and they actually, the chiefs or the leaders of two tribes hold their hands and they <coughs> jump over the carcass, saying, if we break this peace, let's say peace uh, treaty or covenant, then you'll be like this carcass. So that's what, the, what that covenant does. So instead here, rather than Abraham and God going together over the carcass, only God goes over the carcass. Which means that even if Abraham breaks the covenant, whatever that covenant might be, God will be responsible only. Is that conditional or unconditional covenant for Abraham? Unconditional. Unconditional. Yeah? Are we getting it? It's an unconditional covenant that Abraham, uh, that God makes with Abraham. Then later on, there was one, there's one condition, which is circumcision. Okay. Why circumcision? What did he do just before he got circumcised? Abraham, you know? What was God, what did Abraham want from God? A son. A son. Someone to inherit my stuff. Yeah? So, God says, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll do that for you. All right. So, Abraham being a, a man, a good man, but still a bad, with a good intention, he wanted to help God. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? He has a son. Yeah. Instead of with uh, Sarah, he has a son with Hagar. Yeah. And he, he got... Ishmael. What a big event that was. Look at the consequence no, of no. good intention of Abraham That's to right. help God out. Our human good intention is the worst enemy of God. You have That's to understand right. that. Yeah. Your good ideas that you want to do for God can have a lot of consequences. That's right, yeah. So circumcision is this. Before that, was he circumcised? No. Circumcision is saying, like, this is my doing. This is my offspring. I'm going to bring this out the, my way. Okay? And he circumcises, and then he gives him a son, Isaac. So, and then he talks about in the Old Testament, in fact, it's not, you know, the circumcision of the heart? Mm. It's not a New Testament concept. Mm. It's in Deuteronomy. It says, circumcise your heart. And later on he says, I will circumcise your heart. So circumcision of your heart is about not your way. Don't do it your way. Mm -hmm. It's not your way. You've got to follow my way. Mm -hmm. okay? It's a repentance thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Repentance is not, I'm sorry, going from one direction to it another wholly different yeah. direction. Yeah. Okay? That's circumcision. My way, not your way. Okay? So I just want to highlight Abraham's covenant is unconditional yeah out of Abraham descended who comes out Isaac. yeah Isaac and who, who, what, what's the Jewish, nation called Jewish, Jewish. Israel gets birth okay let's go Israel Exodus 19 another huge covenant that God makes it's called Sinaitic covenant because it's Mount Sinai uh, yeah, that they actually made it so let's read that in the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt they have been rescued out of Egypt on the same day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. Sinai. 
Sinai, for they have departed from Rephidim, had come to the wilderness of Sinai and came camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain, and Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on, on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be uh, to me, uh, be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Okay? God makes a covenant with Israel. You are going to be solution to the problem of sin for all nations. Because you are going to be my priest. Yeah? A nation of holy priesthood. Is this a conditional or unconditional covenant? It's a conditional covenant. What's going on here? What's going on on here? Makes an unconditional co uh, covenant with, Abra um, with Abraham, and now he makes a conditional covenant with whole Israel. He says, if you fully or indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, did Israel keep that covenant? No. Did God know that he's, they're not going to keep the covenant? Yes. Yeah. yes. Why did he even do that? If he fully knows that they can't do it. So they can realize that they cannot do it? That's part of it, yes. But there's a greater reason for this. Salvation. So, unconditional. But there's another covenant, that another huge covenant that God makes with David. And that's where that David, the son of David comes in. 2 Samuel 7, very famous. Basically, David wanted to do a, build a, a, a temple for God because he was living in a nice palace. I can't live like this. God is in a little shed. I can't live in a palace, so I want to build it. And God says, you've got too much blood in your hand. You can't build it. You just prepare for it. But I will... Build a dynasty for you. Out of your seed, mm. single seed, out of your descendant, there will be a king who will have a kingdom which will last forever and ever. That's not an earthly kingdom, is it? Mm. Out of your descendant. And you're, now we are talking about Messiah. Mm. Okay? And this is very important, is this. So, how does this all work? All right. So, who is this Jesus, the Son of God? The Son of David. God creates a covenant with Israel. Okay? If you obey me, you know, you'll be my priest, who will be the solution to the problem of mm -hmm. sin. But they actually could not keep the covenant. But did God break the covenant? No. no. God is always faithful. But Israel was not. So what he, God does is this. He provides. All right? He actually is faithful to his, his own covenant towards Israel. But what he does is he actually uh, provides a man who represents whole of Israel. The Israel. The Israelite, who is sinless, who keeps the covenant fully in faithfulness to God, and he fulfills that covenant on behalf of Israelites, so that that covenant is fulfilled. And who is that? Jesus. That's Jesus, the descendant of yeah. David, the offspring of David, the offspring of Eve, that will crush the head of the serpent. What he promised to Abraham, what he promised to David, what he actually promised to Israel also, because the Israelite, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, has fulfilled on behalf of them the very covenant that God makes. God, both ends, from his end and to people's end, he provides. What he did over the carcasses that Abraham provided, I will make this happen. Who broke the covenant? Mankind, mm -hmm. so who became like carcass? Son of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
torn on the cross, body ripped apart for the sake of the mankind, to fulfill the very kind of covenant that he makes. He fulfills all prophecies and promises of God, and that's why it says in 2 Corinthians 1, all promises and all the plans of God is yes, yes and amen in Christ Jesus. He is the fulfillment of it. Does that make sense? Mm. So let's go to Romans 3. I think there's Romans 3 is here. And you got to, we have not translated Romans 3 properly. And we've got to translate this properly, otherwise it doesn't make sense. But now, let me just read NIV version, because <clears throat> NIV is the worst kind of version that you can read on Romans 3. <clears throat> it says here, But now a righteousness from God, apart from the law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. The Old Testament, right? This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Okay, don't read that yet. It says this, This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. That, who is he actually referring the righteousness of God to be? Here, what, what I just, what, what I read, NIV. Don't look at that yet. Turn that off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright? <laughs> <laughs> Let me read it again. The righteousness of God, a righteousness from God, comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Who is the center of that verse? Jesus. No. Us. 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 It says this. The righteousness of God from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Our faith in Jesus Christ brings righteousness of God upon us. It says that. That's wrong. 